I didn't spoil the secret on purpose. I just never forgot. tell old people anything. Yeah, I guess that maybe that's the lesson to be learned. Yeah. Uh, duly noted. I really love this series and how it deals with um, sort of a wide range of topics, you know, apart from the sci-fi story of it all. It's talking about things like depression, feeling stuck in a routine, searching for purpose, feeling insignificant in the face of this vast, larger universe that's out there. But I'm curious, from your perspectives, what stood out to you the most when you were first reading the script? When I first got the audition, um, they sent us the first two episodes. So I I couldn't put it down. Like, I was, I was so intrigued by my character. I was like, who? is this guy who, you know, where does he come from? And uh, and I, I think that w that's kind of like the main thing that like drew me to him. It's like, I'd love to play a really challenging character that, um, you know, I've never played before. And this is kind of my world. I, I generally do science fiction, fantasy, you know, um, shows. And this was just completely up my alley. I, I, I loved every minute of it, including, you know, the, the, the start reading the script. It was so fascinating and so, compelling that I just I just wanted to, to read on. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I, lo I love the pilot and I love Denise. I thought she was really identifiable and I, I thought I could identify with her pretty pretty easily. And I think that's a good indication of when you're probably pretty right for a role when you just can envision yourself doing it. Um, but I, as Kaya, I just, I loved a story about two grandparents and two people in love, but just at a different timeline. You know, in the industry, we're so used to seeing people at their hottest, youngest, you know, most mm. fertile selves. And so it's like fun to be able to kind of get the flip of that and just watch a relationship develop, you know, at a later stage because it still is one. And, you know, we're still dealing with a lot of the same things that you would when you're dating when you're 15 or 20 or whatever. So um, I, I loved how relatable it was and how honestly refreshing. Yeah, I love seeing that sense of history there. Um, yeah. So something else I want to talk about, uh, one of my favorite things is when, when Jude arrives, he has this battered copy of the Count of Monte Cristo with him. If you were to go on a mysterious journey, like say Jude might in this show, what would be the one book that you would take with you and why? Ooh. Well, I, I actually, um, in pre-production, I read the uh, uh, the Count of Monte Cristo and I, I loved it. It was such a fascinating it's book. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to read it just to kind of get um, a couple of things. Maybe I could kind of litter the scenes with some kind of throwbacks to, to the book. Um, but uh, I think if, if for me, Chai, if I was to bring any uh, um, book on a journey with me, it would be Shantaram. It's the most phenomenal book I've read today. And I've read that a long time ago. And I, actually talking about it, I think I might read it again. It's so good. <laughs> uh, and I highly recommend it. It's so good. So Fantastic. That is yeah. some high praise right there. I will check it yeah. out. Uh, yeah. Kaya, what about you? Oh, gosh. Um... I love memoirs, so uh, probably Eileen Miles, uh, Chelsea Girls. It's one of my favorites. She just talks about growing up in New York in the 70s, and it's such a time capsule that it's it's like fun. To, it's just like always a good one to really pick up. Look, if you might be stepping outside the bounds of time and space, why not transport <laughs> yourself to another time with a book like that? That's perfect. Yes, exactly. <laughs> awesome. This show, a lot of it is about keeping secrets, people hiding things from each other, from their neighbors, from themselves in some cases. How good are you at keeping secrets? secrets in real life. Do you think that you have a pretty good poker face? You're more like Franklin and Irene, or you're more like Byron, the nosy neighbor? I'm definitely not as good as Irene. I think <laughs> I'm Franklin and Irene are phenomenal. I, I'm a terrible liar. I can't lie to save my life. Even if I, you know, I would try, but I'm terrible. I'd have some kind of smirk or laugh. It, it, I would give it away. I'm, yeah, don't trust me with a secret. Actually, no, Duly you noted. can. If it was something that, you know, our <laughs> lives depended on, I would, but uh, yeah, there's, there's degrees liar. to it. I'm a nosy neighbor. I, I, I love to peek at what's going on outside, especially because I live in a city. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like always fun to like update, you know, your partner or whoever about like, well, did you see who and who moved across the street? You know, it's easy, right? You don't live like 40 feet away from each other, like Irene and Franklin. Exactly. What are cities for if not for hot goss at all the time, always? <laughs> I really am enjoying this series so far, and I really love how it deals with topics like depression, feeling sort of stuck in a rut, searching for purpose, and kind of feeling insignificant in the feeling of, you know, the vastness of the universe. And I feel like it really, you know, kind of brings those things to the forefront right from the get-go. So I'm curious, what stood out to you uh, when you were first reading the script for this series? The main thing for me was the relationship between Franklin and Irene. 
But all those other things that you just said were also in the mix. Thank you for being yeah. so articulate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hate to be unoriginal, but uh, that was that was what initially drew me in too, for sure. Well, I mean, that's obviously one of the big highlights of the series for me as well, seeing you two together on screen. And the relationship feels so lived in, it feels so real. And just so, it's really interesting to see it unfold. But one thing that I really like is sort of how, you know, Irene seems to be a bit smoother of an operator at times than Franklin does, like when he has to go to the pharmacy, for example. So I'm curious, uh, how good are each of you at keeping secrets in real life? Are you more like your respective counterparts? Are you more like Byron, for example? Can't wait to uh, get into other people's business. <laughs> Byron. I can oh, keep Byron. I can keep a secret. Do you have one to tell me? Uh, depending on how this <laughs> interview goes, potentially. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm generally pretty good at it. The only problem is I, I just forget sometimes, not unlike Franklin, you know, and then and then my wife will be, no, no, remember, you were not supposed to tell anybody. <laughs> like, oh, right, right, right. I didn't spoil a secret on purpose. I just never forgot. tell old people. Anything. Yeah, I guess that maybe that's the lesson to be learned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, duly noted, duly Except noted. Not me. I won't forget. Yes, I will. I will keep that in mind. Uh, JK, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be telling Sissy after this. <laughs> Fine. So something else that I really enjoy about the series in the first episode, Chandra tells Irene what an impact she made on her as a teacher. And I feel like good teachers, especially good English teachers are really people that can transport you to another place, another time, show you all this possibility. So I'm curious, was there a teacher in your life who made a profound impact on you? And if so, what was it? Well, my father was a teacher who had a profound impact on me. Um, uh, my my sister just retired uh, after a, a career as a teacher. My brother, uh, one of his many Renaissance man uh, uh, reinventions, was as a teacher. So it's it, it's a, a profession isn't even the right word. It's a, a calling that I uh, that I that I really appreciate. And I had, you know, a number of teachers from Miss Allen in second grade uh, in Michigan to uh, you know. Professor Don Carey at the University of Montana. You know, I, I could I could list thirty names that uh, that had uh, significant impacts on me at different stages. Miss Mary Margaret Pepper, who was my music teacher. You're making so that up. <laughs> in in second grade, and we went. She went all through school, being my music teacher, and uh, she was amazing. And my third grade teacher, Mrs. Lipscomb, we did our music, our, our homework to music in school. And then she changed my life. Amazing. I love to hear it. Uh, my last question for you folks is when Jude arrives on the scene, he has a battered copy of The Count of Monte Cristo with him. What is the book that you would take on a mysterious journey of your own? To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, you stole my answer again. <laughs> You can take that book too. Well, okay, yeah, we're both we're taking the same book. Look, uh, I guess there's a reason we did this show together. We're mm -hmm. Who knows? Besides the same coin. We never had this conversation. That was absolutely my go-to. Yeah. That's no secret. And that's I think that's no secret now, certainly. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's incredible, folks. Thank you so much for taking the time. Congratulations again, and I can't wait for everyone else to see this fantastic show. Thank you so much. So Thank much. you. Oh my gosh.